Vice President Byrne, Dean Heaton, colleagues, family, friends, and most of all, the outstanding class of 2016. I am thrilled to be here with all of you this morning celebrating this very special occasion and having the chance to say a few words to you. But most of all, I am delighted with the honor of being here with you all today at the first graduation ceremony of the College of Global Public Health. And I want to begin by recognizing Dean Hilton and the faculty for their expertise and hard work during global public health transition into a full college of the university. It has been a tremendous accomplishment. And as we heard from Vice President Byrne, the sky is indeed the limit and we look forward to great, great things in the future. And to the class of 2016, you are the first. You are the only class that can lay claim to that distinction. <laughs> you should do so with pride, as I know you do. And it is a distinction of great con consequence. You, class of 2016, you have helped shape the College of Global Public Health, not only in the past year, but over the entire course of your studies at NYU. You have brought life to a college that is crucial to NYU, advancing the university's mission to contribute to the public good, both in New York City and around the globe. You have been part of a unique community, working to improve health in groundbreaking ways. You've helped, design, you've helped define a broad new field that in the 21st century may be called upon like no other for its expertise and commitment. You leave here, class of 2016, knowing that you were part of the College of Global Public Health's transformative first year, something about which you should take great honor and great pride. Dr. L Martin Luther King Jr. once said, keep feeling the need for being first, but I want you to be the first in love. I want you to be the first in moral excellence. I want you to be the first in generosity. What marvelous words. Having chosen the vocation of public service, class of 2016, you are well on your way to achieving those firsts. Now our inaugural keynote speaker this morning also knows a lot about being first. In these areas, and in many, many more. After being nominated by President Obama and confirmed by the United States Senate, he served as Assistant Secretary for Health for the US Department of Health and Human Services from 2009 to 2014. During his tenure, he promoted the disease prevention and public health dimensions of the Affordable Care Act he advanced outreach to enroll underserved and minority populations in health insurance coverage. And he was the primary architect of landmark strategic plans for tobacco control, health disparities, and chronic hepatitis. He also led implementation of an ambitious 10-year plan for improving the health of all Americans and of the National HIV AIDS Strategy, 
among many, many other initiatives. Now, he serves as the Harvey V. Feinberg Professor of the Practice of Public Health Leadership at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health and also at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. A graduate of Yale College and the Yale University School of Medicine, he earned board certification in no fewer than four medical specialties, as well as a Master of Public Health degree from Boston University. We are enormously honored that he could join us today to be, to be part of this very special occasion, the first graduation ceremony of the College of Global Public Health at NYU. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in warmly welcoming our distinguished speaker, Dr. Howard Coe. President Hamilton, Executive Vice President Byrne, Dean Hilton, faculty, administration, students, families, and friends. Congratulations, NYU College of Global Public Health Class of 2016. You did it. You are the first class of young professionals to embrace the mission of this majestic new NYU College of Global Public Health. You are the first graduates to benefit from the extraordinary dedication and commitment of at least three visionary leaders, Dean Hilton, Dr. Byrne, and President Hamilton. They and we believe in you and your potential as global leaders. So for the rest of time, you will be known as pioneers. Accomplishing all of this requires guts and grit, and we congratulate you. Living this mission means fully embracing the World Health Organization definition of health, which reads, quote, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, unquote. I love this definition. I love it so much, I'll say it again. <laughs> Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This means that health is not just about the body, but also about the mind, the spirit, and the soul. This means that health is not just about disease prevention, but also about true wellness and reaching our full potential. No wonder the late Yale chaplain, Reverend William Sloan Coffin, once joyously proclaimed, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. And this means that we all recognize that health is a profound and precious gift. As that famous saying goes, yesterday is a history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. That's why they call it present. <laughs> As graduates, you now stand poised to apply this inspiring definition of health on the global stage. You understand that as an individual, one cannot be healthy unless we are all healthy. You understand that a threat to health anywhere is a threat to health everywhere. And you understand that as a global community, we are all interdependent, all interconnected, and we all have promises to keep. But let's face it, living global public health ain't easy. And being a pioneer 
ain't easy either. You remember what they said about the journey of Christopher Columbus. When he left, he didn't know where he was going. When he got there, he didn't know where he was. And when he returned, he didn't know where he had been. <laughs> so now, as you face the next chapter of your lives, how can you best navigate the road ahead? How can you best choose from the vast array of opportunities that will be put before you? And how will you find meaning and fulfillment so that whenever your journey is done, you can look back and say it was all worth it? I have had the honor of living these issues throughout my public health career as a physician, professor, researcher, government official, and most importantly, as a concerned citizen of the world. Allow me to share three guiding questions that emerged from my own journey that I hope might be of service to you in the days ahead. First, you may want to remember that Vickers once said that public health really is about, quote, successive redefinings of the unacceptable, unquote. So I ask you, what do you find unacceptable where you could lead change for good? Some of you know exactly what you want to do next, and that's great. But the rest of you may have no idea what comes next, and to me, that's even better. Because it means that as you search externally, to make a difference in the world, you can also search internally into your soul to discover powerful reasons to motivate you for the road ahead. For example, we can say that it is unacceptable that in this world of seven billion, that two and a half billion have no access to sanitation and nearly 800 million have no access to clean water. We can say that it is unacceptable that the United States, the wealthiest country in the world, ranks only 43rd with respect to life expectancy. Or we can say that it is unacceptable that so many people are dying preventable deaths so that they are falling far short of living their full potential for health. For me, this last definition of what is unacceptable changed my life. My story began a generation ago when my courageous parents traveled to this country from Korea searching for the American dream. They were pioneers. Like you, they were the first. They told us children it was our duty and destiny to make something of ourselves in this country of hope and opportunity. So I started my career as a physician and clinician, determined to cure every patient put before me. Caring for another person's health is an extraordinary privilege, and I was proud to do so in a clinical career that extended over 30 years. But I also discovered that far too many of my patients were succumbing from preventable conditions, starting with tobacco addiction. This realization was a source of great personal and professional anguish, and I found it unacceptable. After caring for so many, suffering, preventable suffering, and dying preventable death, I came to the conclusion that there had to be another way. I searched to find other colleagues who felt the same way I did. And when I found there were many other professionals who also found this unacceptable and were leading change for good, professionals like my wonderful colleague and your dean, Cheryl Hilton, that's when my public health awakening began. Like you, I learned that in addition to tobacco, there were a host of other threats to health, such as cancer, behavioral health and substance abuse issues, infectious diseases like HIV and hepatitis, environmental hazards like climate change. These were unacceptable and prevented so many from living their full potential for health. And like you, I also learned that many broad societal forces, such as war, poverty, discrimination, Lack of education, lack of insurance, and failing health systems demanded our attention. None of this is easy, of course. 
I quickly discovered that our field, public health, is always the field of the underdog, and that the official color of public health is salmon, because we are always swimming upstream. <laughs> but in the face of these odds, we are lucky to have graduates like you who will act and not be neutral. For as the great Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, when an elephant has his foot on the tail of a mouse and you say you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. <laughs> a second question that I have found vital in the public health journey is, what is it that I've been called to do? If you are like me, you will find yourself not choosing your future, but rather being chosen. If you are like me, you will feel called to explore passions and missions that over time seep into your soul and won't let go. And if you are like me, you will feel called to serve in a way you never could have planned. My life changed when new opportunities arose for public service and government service. And when I received the call, I took the leap, supported by the tremendous love of my wife, family, and friends. It led to extraordinary experiences as a physician in government, first as Massachusetts Commissioner of Public Health, and most recently as U.S. Assistant Secretary for Health. I now feel blessed to have served through many extraordinary chapters in our country's public health history, protecting people in the wake of 9-11 and the anthrax attacks contributing to the global response to the H1N1 pandemic, leveraging new authority by the FDA to regulate tobacco for the first time in history, working to reduce unacceptable health disparities in our country, supporting the First Lady's historic Let's Move initiative, joining the U.S. delegation at meetings of the World Health Assembly in Geneva, and of course, helping to implement the historic provisions of the Affordable Care Act. I couldn't have planned any of this, but looking back, I understand now that I was answering a call. So as you travel into the future, please listen carefully to your inner soul so that you too can discover your own sacred calling. Doing so will help you express yourself, not just prove yourself. Doing so will help you determine in your life what is ultimate and what is merely important. There is a unique path for you in global public health in the days ahead. And believe me, your journey, starting here at NYU and now moving beyond, will be all worth it if you can discover and heed your calling. For it has been said that the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. The third and most important guiding question for the future is, what will you do every day to encourage the heart? Leadership experts Kuzis and Posner have written that encouraging the heart represents the soul of what we do as leaders. So as you contemplate the universe of careers in global public health, please remember that your professional and personal success will ultimately depend on how you treat every person that you meet along the journey. Too many of us say that we care about the whole world when we haven't even tried to connect with our next door neighbor. And in this digital age, you can instantly text someone many miles away while completely ignoring the person sitting next to you. This is a missed opportunity. So every day, try to encourage the heart. Make this concrete. Start by interacting with the person next to you, in a classroom, in a meeting, or wherever you are. Put down your smartphone and give them your full attention. Engage them in conversation and find a connection. 
because every person you meet represents not only a work of art, but also a potential companion on your journey. Ask them about their family, their hobbies, or their dog, even if they don't have a dog. <laughs> Show them that you care, for as the saying goes, no one cares how much you know unless they first know how much you care. If you do this every day of your professional life, you will steadily build your own rich global community. For it has been said that a community is a place where a joy shared is twice the joy and a sorrow shared is half the sorrow. Ultimately, it is about the people you have met here at NYU and soon around the world that will add so much richness, meaning, and joy to your lives. And as you encourage the heart, please express your explicit gratitude, not just to professional colleagues, but also to your family and friends as well. Global public health is an all-consuming profession, and throughout your careers, you will be regularly confronted by a host of demands that will test you to the limit. Some of those demands will be physical, others emotional, social, and even spiritual. Your friends and family will be the ones who will always support you in good times and in bad. So honor your family and friends and never take them for granted. Explicitly thank them for being wonderful companions with you on the journey. Cherish them and tell them you love them. Because after all, the true definition of a family member is one who really knows you, but loves you anyway. <laughs> so in closing, congratulations, NYU College of Global Public Health Class of 2016. Congratulations for being the first graduates and for being pioneers. May profound questions about redefining what is unacceptable, discovering your calling, and encouraging the heart guide your lives as they have mine. We are so proud of you, and we can't wait to see how you change the world for good. May your days ahead be filled with an abundance of health. Thank you, and God bless you all.